Welcome to another Dartmoor camp. Lassie, of course, this is where she's found the, oh, Lassie, that's where she's found the, the mud from, right in there. I thought she'd found some mud. Paws were very dirty. Well, the sun is uh, going down. It's going to set in around about 20 minutes. Just down over there. And I have found a very, very unique camp for today. I was going to put my bivvy, I brought the bivvy, there and then have the option of putting the poncho over the top. I then looked over here and I thought about putting the bivvy in this space in here, although it's quite rocky. So I was a little bit concerned about the rocks under the base, but I do have foam mats and I think the foam mats might have given it maybe enough protection but there's a hole that goes right the way through and the wind was whistling through. So I didn't really fancy that so much. So I found somewhere else and that's under this rock. Now I've done a health and safety assessment and it feels, Lassie, it feels pretty secure. I don't think it's going to, <laughs> I don't think it's going to move in the night. I think it's uh, pretty secure there. It's on that, that stone over there. Those stones over there seem to be holding it in place. So, I think we'll be safe under there. So this is my home for the night under, under a tour. I've put the thermo rest inside the bivvy. There is a rock at the back. So care just needs to be on that rock there with my clothes and my little bit of Cuba and it's quite muddy. It's sort of dry mud, but muddy over in that corner there. So my little bit of Cuba I've put down and then all my stuff sacks, <laughs> all my individual stuff sacks go over there. There is some rock here. So I might just have to be just mindful of this because I don't want to you know, I don't want to damage this. That's the only thing. It's all very well, you know, doing something a bit different, but in the process, you don't want to damage your equipment either. <laughs> I'm talking about that equipment. Um, so obviously, you know, I'm just aware of that, but I think it should be okay. There's grass there and there's plenty of grass over there. So as long as I sort of stay over there, it should be okay. I've just put, I'll leave Lass's pack out here, just out the way. And then I've got water, access to water here. Um, I've obviously got to unpack my bag there. 
there's not very much room under there. Um, I'll try and film a little bit under there later on. It's a little bit on the tight side. One thing I'm definitely going to do is take this off and put it safely in my pack. There's, uh, I'm not that fussy about my, <laughs> about my Rolexes. Check out my other channel if you're interested in Garmin watches and Rolex watches. Link in the bio for this channel. Uh, but I will put that safe. I don't want to catch a nut on these rocks. Everybody. my nose is bunged up as usual and of course I forgot to put the microphone on so I just keep this this section very short good morning I'll get just put the microphone on okay well I slept the night in my little uh, overhanging rock formation here I actually had a very very good night's sleep let's uh Let's just see, is it's kind of the want of this, is that the right word, the want of, of, um, of me on this channel now? Just to see if my watch <laughs> agrees with my sleep um, sentiment. It's not so easy to read now. My, uh, I don't know if other people get the same problem when they get to 50, the eyes. Jesus, I get a bit, I must admit, I'm getting a little bit annoyed. I'm getting old now. Okay, well, I slept for nine and a half, actually, I slept for nine hours, 12 minutes, quality good. Um, it's like a score of 82. I don't know what I've got to do to sleep out here to get more. <laughs> That's probably the highest score I've ever had. What does it say underneath? Long... Long but interrupted sleep. Oh, I thought I slept quite well. I, I fell asleep. Let's see if it's... Um... <sighs> Damn, my effing eyes. Hang on a minute. The writing is so effing small. I really am. Um... It's a 51 millimeter um... monitor, you know, monitor, you know. Um... It's, it's nearly half past 12 in the afternoon as well. <laughs> I'm not exactly uh, um, making many stray strides in, in getting moving, it has to be said. I am going to pack up because I want to head down the other side of the um, valley here. Yeah, you can see me in my glasses again. You see me wear these very often. 25 pounds. <sighs> Save is more than good. I only need to only need the bloody things to be able to um, read. So uh, I'd rather save for money for watches and camping stuff and <laughs> enjoying myself than uh, than, than, than uh, a load of money on glasses. Right, okay, that's a bit better. Right, so even that's quite small. So it looks like I fell asleep at eleven thirty, or it's where eleven. 50, it could be 11.50, even with these it's not the easiest of things to, I think I fell asleep at 11.50, and obviously last night obviously, and then woke up at 11 o'clock this morning, <coughs> I was awake for two hours, strangely, I'm not quite sure what two hours that was um, that I was awake for because I felt like I was asleep for most of it. I did feel like I slept for most of that time, but maybe this morning I was just very, very chilled out. Let's have a look. So deep sleep, 56 minutes. Light sleep, 
5 hours 45, ram 2 and a half hours and wake for 2 hours. You experienced, you experienced interruptions in your sleep. You may feel tired today. Well, if you're awake, are those, you know, this looks like I sort of, I think it's I woke up several times during the night. I definitely woke up at about 7 o'clock for a while because I had a, I had a tea. I think I did wake up a few times during the night, come to think of it, because I, um, it was very, very misty out and quite windy as well. Very, very windy. And I must admit, I do remember, I tell, hello, I can see you quite clearly now. Oh, a bit blurry now. Um, I do remember, oh, I do remember waking up and it was so bloody clumsy too. I do remember waking up and it was very misty during the night. Very, very misty and very, very windy. And of course, one mistake that I did make, well, it's not really a mistake, but one thing I didn't really, really take into consideration, but it, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. But if it had have been raining, even though I've got this over hang literally over my head, if there was a very, very strong wind-blown rain, the wind is blowing this way. So I would have got, um, well, I wouldn't have got wet because I've got, I've got the, the event, the MLD event bivy. So obviously I would have been, you know, perfectly dry. But it would have meant that, you know, rain would have been coming in, even though I've got an overhang, which would have been a little bit annoying. Um... But luckily, it didn't rain. It was just very, quite breezy. But at least I did have what I consider <laughs> a good night sleep. It was actually 12 hours of just chilling out. I watched a film on Amazon Prime last night called Nobody. Now, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but it was just absolutely brilliant. Um, sort of an action fighting type thing, you know, right up my street, really. But uh, it really was quite <laughs> a bit stupid, but really very, very good. So I certainly recommend. Uh, I can recommend uh, nobody if you uh, if you're into your action e fighting e type film. I've had breakfast. I should remember to try and have little breaks in my words because I said it was a very good action-y film. I've had breakfast. Now, that's fine because I can, I can just leave that in when I'm editing. I don't need to edit out that I've had breakfast and I don't need to edit out um, that, I was, uh, that I recommended and, and saw nobody. But sometimes you might have to edit something and if you run your words in too close together, it's not quite so easy to break one word in, you know, from the next. Anyway, I've had some breakfast. I've had one tea. I'm going to have another tea. And then I'm going to try and slowly extricate myself, <laughs> excavate, excavate myself out of here. Because it's, uh, as you can see, I've moved myself quite at home in here and it's uh it's the usual jumble and and mess and everything i'm not going to be able to pack in here it's going to be uh far too tight and i i keep banging my head not hard luckily it's just more of a very gentle i haven't yet knocked myself out or maybe I could knock some sense into myself but so far I've not um, done anything bizarre like that thankfully but it's not that convenient in here for packing I must say when I unpacked I just basically just took everything out from outside and then put it inside and then when I was in here I put the pack next to me on my left and then I was able to kind of like pull things out of it. And then I put, put all the bags down there. Everything's in dry bags or stuff sacks. So it goes down when I went down there. And then I've got my little bit of 
Cuban uh, down there, which is like, like a sort of a kind of like a ground sheet for that stuff there. Um, and that kind of works okay. As I say, what it would really be like under here in the rain, because it's not just um, the rain that you have to think about from outside. There are nooks and crannies here. There's a, a cranny, there's a, a nook and a cranny just up through there. And I would imagine that rainwater would get down there and then, of course, into this area here. Again, you could probably move all of your bits over to one side or, you know, or another, um, you know, to give it some protection. So you could probably work around that. But then also, there's also this area here, just through there. And again, there's moss there, so clearly water must somehow get through there. But to get in and out was, is kind of interesting because you have to kind of bend yourself down a bit like this, crawl backwards. Luckily, I've got my... And then, I don't get any bloody younger either. And then you kind of like crawl out like that. I've got my, I always carry two pieces of foam matting, one piece there, one piece there. In the summer, that piece is usually a bit shorter. And then in the winter, I'll bring a longer sheet, just not the full length. It's, usually, it's the other half of that, oh, or the other three quarters of that, or the other two thirds of that piece. Um, but I usually always bring this piece of foam here and it's a good job that I set up the tripod last night because that's hold literally holding that piece down because I might have not thought about it because it wasn't windy last night and it's just possible that I might have not done anything with that. I'm not quite sure anyway it's definitely on the breezy side as you can see but it's not excessively windy but i really do need to try and get shifting a little bit <coughs> let's see what uh it's warm enough that i can do bare feet though. I probably need to get the neutral density filter on this lens. There's a good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. Thankfully she hasn't I've I haven't reminded her about her water hole over there, so she hasn't uh, she hasn't gone over there. Okay, well I really do need to try and get shifting slowly here. It's, uh, it'll be one o'clock before we know it. It doesn't get dark for a long time. The plan basically is to head down into the valley, walk along, let me show you, is to walk down into the valley on the other side and then walk along and then find somewhere to camp further along the valley. Um, tonight I've got three nights here so I'll just try and camp somewhere you know along there so a similar area walking well it's the same area um, when I was with Darren obviously when I was with Darren we camped just over there um, it's just when I came with the bivvy I was looking around here thinking well I'm, I could probably go somewhere else with the bivvy because it's so small and I just wanted somewhere, you know, convenient, really. It's just, uh, no, because I just saw a bit of an overhang there. But then it wouldn't protect you from the rain if it rained. It's very small, very, very small overhang. This is a really good overhang. It could almost do with being a tiny bit higher. If it was about, <laughs> 
if it was about six inches, <laughs> if it was about six inches higher, it would be the almost perfect shelter. Oh yeah, and apart from the fact that rain, if it rained, I think would actually be a problem. Although, although looking at this side, yeah, I think it, it probably would be because obviously there you can see my rucksack inside. So basically any rain that landed here would pretty much come down this way, but windblown rain that would be hitting there would run straight down there. So that, that could be a problem. And then again, any rain that happened to land on this rock here could end up going down there, but you probably wouldn't get too much down there because you've got, there is a, a, a natural lip along there, which might help stop some water from getting down there. So uh, maybe, maybe you wouldn't get too much down there in the rain. Yeah, maybe you'd get away with it there. Uh, you would definitely get some going down but maybe not too much. I think here, rain would be hitting here and then would be going down. So I think you would, I think you would definitely have rain going down there, but maybe not, maybe not torrents of rain. Testing. Not sure if you could just see the, the big <laughs> helicopter right down in that valley right down there that's uh Whew. there we go this is going over someone's going to get a nice view of that flying over them I don't know, is that the RAF or Army? Must be RAF, the Army don't have Chinooks, do they, I don't think. But I can't say for sure. Just think if the old uh, RAF or Army flew over here and just landed over there, it could feature in one of my videos. That would get a few views, wouldn't it? <laughs> Look at this thing go. Look how low that is, Jesus. Holy Maloney, that is so low. God, it actually gives me the heebie jeebies. <sighs> that is so low. They're probably actually, to be honest, it probably looks, well, I mean, clearly it is low. It's probably a lot lower than it actually appears. So they're probably following the land around. They're probably not just going down willy nilly, as it were. They're probably, as you can see, they're banking a bit. So they're probably following the contours around, but Jesus, I don't think I've ever seen something quite so low you know, as that through there. That's uh, quite extraordinary. It's coming back around over there now. Keeps going. He's obviously going to try that manoeuvre again, I guess. still walking around here barefoot it's uh i must admit the weather is quite pleasant today it was very chilly during the night and i want to talk to you about that because there's a little bit of a lesson for anyone who actually 
does watch my videos. But let's just watch him doing this one more time. I'm afraid to uh, you can even see. He's not really banking, is he? He is going straight down. You'll get dizzy, he's going, going the same way each time. Don't know if you can still see him. He's going very, very slowly around there now. Okay, I want to talk to you about last night because uh, it's really quite important that people pay attention to this and it might even be worth doing a separate tiny video on this. We'll kind of see how it goes, but... All right, let's watch him. He's coming back again. I don't know how many times he's done this now. I'm not sure quite how many... <laughs> I'm not quite sure how many times this uh, this pilot has, has, has entered this uh, this valley of doom. But he's slipping it in quite nicely down through there. Pulled everything out. I've got my tea stuff around there. Um, obviously, Lass's bag, waste rubbish bag there. Obviously, my shoes and socks there, my glasses case. I'll go in the outside. Obviously, there's nothing left under there. We've pulled every single thing out from under there now. I basically unpacked everything. I basically pulled the bed out here so I had some space outside. So it's a good job it wasn't raining. It would have been very difficult packing away if the weather hadn't have been good. To be honest, I probably wouldn't have gone under there if it had been forecast of rain, but I might have done it, actually. <laughs> I just couldn't really resist giving it a try. Anyway, yeah, back to, so yeah, so the, the temperature, I checked the forecast and it said down to eight. Now my sleeping, my lightweight sleeping bag, the MLD one is a 48. It's the uh, MLD 48 quilt. 48, as we know, is about 10 degrees. 10 degrees is actually, you know, about what it went down to last night, eight, nine, 10 degrees, something like that. So I couldn't help but think that my cheap Amazon um, sort of bag thing, I think we would struggle with that. I don't think it was much thicker than the um, MLD one. The MLD one I know is rated, like I said, at uh, 48, which is about 10 degrees. I'm a freezing cold sleeper. Um, so I brought my warmest MLD quilt, which is the, uh, the Spirit 28. And that's rated at minus five, because 28 is about minus five in, you know, centigrade. Um, there's no way that I would be warm at that temperature. I would absolutely freeze at that temperature in it. But last night, um, I just had my shirt on. Because it was kind of like cramped under there, I didn't bother putting all my night stuff on. I put my night leggings on. I must I did do that and my night, night socks on, but I just kept my shirt on last night and I didn't bother putting, and that was enough um, last night. So I don't know what the temperature was last night. I'll maybe try and look later on. I've put the thing away now. It was very windy last night. I think a bit windier than it is now. And also, it was um, very, very misty as well. It was very, very misty when I woke up in the early hours of the morning. So, yeah, so going back to what I, what I was talking about, um, check the weather forecast, and especially this time of the year, take a bag or a sleeping system which is somewhat... Um, more rated than what you'll be going to so make sure that it's you know suitable for somewhat colder weather than you're going to i'm not saying you've got to take a, a minus 20 bag you know when it's 10 degrees but if you're anything like me and you're a cold sleeper 
And I know from experience over the last 10 years of camping, so I may not get the views, but I've been doing this for a long time, remember? I've been doing these videos and camping here now for 10 odd years. Um, so I know from experience that when the temperature drops, you need a warmer, you know, a warmer system, uh, you know, to keep you comfy at night. It's amazing to think I've been doing this for so long. Some of these people do it just for five minutes and they think they're experts. And I've, I still don't consider myself an expert, far, far, far from it. But I have got some experience of coming around here now. So make sure you've got a bag that's warm enough to keep you comfy. All right, I need to start doing something because it's coming up to two o'clock and I need to be planning on my next little adventure.